On Saturday, Conservative Party leader Stephen Harper called cannabis infinitely worse than tobacco and reiterated his commitment to combating the plan. According to Harper, there's overwhelming and growing scientific and medical evidence about the bad long-term effects of marijuana. But even a cursory review of recent studies and statistics proves otherwise. For example, according to Statistics Canada, about 37,000 Canadians die from tobacco annually. Conversely, there has never been a single cannabis death. Furthermore, studies show that cannabis is less addictive and far safer than other legal and illegal drugs. The plant doesn't cause long-term harmful effects, even to teens. The gateway theory is false. And with prohibition, Canada has the highest rate of underage cannabis use compared to other Western nations. At the campaign stop in Montreal, Harper also said that we've spent a couple of generations trying to reduce the usage of tobacco in Canada with a lot of success. Tobacco is a product that does a lot of damage. Marijuana is infinitely worse and is something we do not want to encourage. While Harper is correct that tobacco use has been declining for years, he fails to admit that this progress was made under a legal system. Dr. Dan Werb, director of the International Center for Science and Drug Policy, pointed out this flaw in Harper's argument, saying, would the Prime Minister suggest that Canada's tobacco regulation system encourages tobacco use? The opposite is actually the case. The annual rate of smoking among Canadians has been dropping steadily for the past two decades, with the highest decline among youth aged 15 to 19 years old. Not only did Harper once again lie about cannabis over the weekend, his hypocrisy was also on full display. Despite a federal court ruling allowing women to wear niqabs during citizenship ceremonies, the Harper Conservatives want to ban the garment, calling it a barbaric cultural practice. According to Stephen Harper, an overwhelming majority of Canadians support the ban which is true, based on a recent poll ordered by Harper. He added that the other parties have created a difficulty for themselves by taking positions that are simply out of step with the values of Canadians. So in Harper's mind, a poll commissioned by the Conservative government showing 82% support for an ideological fear-based policy that will affect a whopping two women is worthy evidence. But when an even greater percentage, 86%, support cannabis law reform, according to a CBC survey with three times as many respondents. Polls don't mean a thing. Last year, another poll commissioned by the Conservative government showed that more than 70% of Canadians support cannabis law reform. But of course, if Harper doesn't agree with a poll's outcome, it doesn't exist. In fact, in August, Harper said a majority of Canadians support his war on cannabis. Evidently, if you're not a diehard Conservative supporter who hangs on Harper's every word, you're not a Canadian.